Well, when we feel wronged, we should be able to turn to the justice system for vindication. For Monica, she took on the police for being unlawfully arrested. She won, but it could leave her broke. I won a court case and now I'm going potentially bankrupt. Oh! Will you be able to afford a quarter of a million dollars? No. I actually have no money, so um, you can't get blood out of a stone. Depending who you ask, Monica Smith is a lot of things. Hobby journalist, anti-lockdown activist, or as a judge put it, a self-styled freedom fighter and hero for her people who strained the boundaries of the truth to further her cause. I was my lawyer, my star witness, and I was defending my claims against a whole team of lawyers. I have a work permit! Are you serious? I've got a work permit! I'd never, ever stood up to police in my life. I don't know what happened, but I guess something just took over me. October 2020, Melbourne's emerging from one of the world's strictest lockdowns. Masks are still mandatory. You can't gather in groups and people can't travel further than 25 kilometres unless for work. I attended a rally uh, called Stop the Sale of Victoria, run by my then boyfriend Morgan C. Jonas, and I was a reporter at the time. I had a large profile. I had a cameraman there with me and things like that. And um, I got arrested three times in one day. I'm a journalist! You can't do this! Within three hours, Monica's arrested. So we've been told that if we stay here, we're going to get arrested. So here we go. Move. Move. Then released three times. I was crying, uh, I was praying, I'm a praying person, and I remember looking out the window of the little police van and just looking out thinking, what is happening to this country, what is happening to Victoria? Monica sues police for false imprisonment, going to Victoria's county court where, remarkably, she represents herself. The courtroom was full today. Thank you to everyone who supported me. It took me four years and I represented myself against a huge team of lawyers from the government and I won. You won, but there's a catch, isn't there? There is a catch. There is a catch. I have to pay for the pleasure of winning my case. Monica wins her case on a technicality with two out of three arrests deemed unlawful, including because on one occasion, Police didn't tell her exactly why she was being detained. For that, Monica's awarded $4,000 compensation, but then ordered by the same judge to pay Victoria Police's legal fees, estimated at nearly a quarter of a million dollars. The fact that they've put this cost order against me makes people think, what, hang on, like if she had lost, I would understand. You know, she won and now she has to pay for winning. Monica says it's all because she turned down a $15,000 deal she was offered by the state not to go to court. This trial for me was not about money, it was about public vindication, not just for myself but for others. And there was no offer of a public apology, there was no offer of even a private apology. The only way that I got what I was seeking was to go to trial, which I got. I got public vindication. You do accept, though, that you weren't just there that day as a journalist? I accept that I aligned with the principles of the event itself. I was still reporting on the event. Which one? Was it 52% was it reporting and 48% and, and activism? Was it... Who, does, who determines that I'm more of a journalist or more of an activist. If a defendant in a proceeding makes a written offer to a plaintiff, so the person bringing the case, um, and then they go to court and they go under that offer, so they get less than what was offered to them, uh, then the court then has the power to order that they pay the defendant's costs from the date of that offer going forward. Jeremy King from Robinson Gill Lawyers. It's obviously an awful situation and uh, you obviously have a great deal of sympathy uh, for the plaintiff in that situation. But unfortunately, that is how the law um, is set up and that, that is how courts are set up, that they, they do want to try and encourage the parties to resolve their cases. Following COVID, Monica fled Melbourne and moved to the Sunshine State, making the trek back to her old city 
for the trial. I find it interesting that they had to have such a big team against a self-represented litigant. If I had a team of two barristers and two solicitors, I would understand why the state would mirror that, for example. But I was literally sitting on my own. The 36-year-old fears it'll send her bankrupt. A lot of people have asked me to create a fundraiser to pay off the bill, but I refuse to ask for money from people for a lost cause that's going to go straight into the pockets of the perpetrator. We must point out Monica was previously convicted of running an unregistered fundraiser to pay for unrelated legal bills. I went to prison for 22 days in a high security prison in solitary confinement for 22 days simply because I refused to sign bail conditions that would have shut down my lucrative business at the time. That business being her anti-lockdown group Reignite Democracy Australia. They dropped all the incitement charges, um, so basically I went to prison for nothing. Monica's considering suing police for that too, although she eventually was found guilty of a less serious charge of a COVID breach. I kind of feel like I'm being punished for saying no to a deal. I feel like I'm being punished for pursuing it all the way. Why am I being Well, I reckon there'll be plenty of opinions on this one. And while Victoria Police declined to comment, Monica is considering whether to appeal.